Hi, Glenn here. These two racks are the Doomsday Computer for my Mad Scientist Zombie Laboratory. I set these up as a background behind the zombie containment unit at Halloween. There's a lot going on in these racks. We have Nixie tubes, we have video, we have some analog panel meters, and of course we have lots and lots of buttons and lights. Today, I'd like to focus on this panel. Let's get started. I went ahead and pulled this out of the rack to make it easier to look at. We're going to focus on the panel on the left here. This is the Transition Right Logic panel from my Grass Valley Group Series 300 video switcher. I found it on an auction site. Uh, the thing that interested me the most in this panel is this lever right here. Two primary reasons. The first, this lever is very similar to the lever used on board the Death Star to blow up the planet Alderaan. The second reason is that unlike on an audio mixer, where all the sliders move linearly up and down, this lever, called a T-bar fader, rotates about a central pivot. If you look at the back, we can see the pivot mechanism and the rotary potentiometer that it's connected to. To turn this into a Halloween prop, I needed to get these lights blinking. To do that, I had to reverse engineer this panel. Here's what the back of the panel looks like. It's just standard chips from the early 80s, which is the period when this panel was made. After reverse engineering this panel and figuring out what the pinout of this 50-pin connector is, I came up with this board. This board plugs into the 50-pin connector and lets me control the lights and display on this panel using a modern microcontroller. When the board is powered up, the lights begin to blink randomly and random numbers flash across the display. When plugged into USB host like this Raspberry Pi, the lights turn out and the board becomes a USB peripheral. The board and the lights on the panel and the display can now be controlled using software running on the Raspberry Pi. Let's take a look at a QT GUI I built that controls the lights on the display. Here's the QT GUI for controlling the Grass Valley panel over USB. It looks very similar to the panel. There's a text box for controlling the display. There's a button for controlling the lights behind each button on the physical panel. And then there's a slider and a couple rotary knobs here to indicate the status of the slider and the knobs on the panel. Let's do a quick demonstration. If you type some numbers into the text box, they appear on the display. It's a seven digit display, so there's only room for seven numbers. If you click a button on the GUI, the corresponding button on the panel lights up. But controls two-way. So if you push a button on the panel, its indicator goes out on the GUI. And finally, we have the analog components. There's a T-bar fader. And as you slide the T-bar fader up, the value at the bottom of the slider goes from 0 to 1,023 at the top. And then it'll go back down, or you can stop somewhere in the middle go back and forth. Then there's two concentric knobs here. The outer knob, you turn it, it controls the bottom indicator on the display. And if you turn the inner knob, it controls the value on the upper knob on the display. That's my demo. I'm going to go put this back in the rack before I drop it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. You know, this thing's almost as interesting from the back as it is from the front. Oh look, Nixie tubes. Yeah, I really have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. Well, let's take a closer look at this one.